everybody, welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler, and this is it. We have Crag and Wood Cremator Combo. I've had this deck on my radar for a little while here and finally get an opportunity to play it. And you know what? This hand looks pretty decent, I would say. Maybe not the best thing ever, but we've got turn one Hierarch. We've got turn two Tracker if we really want it. But you know what I'm looking at? Yeah, turn two Steel Leaf Champion here. And uh, yeah, we have this later. We can't actually play it yet for what it's worth. But I'm sure we'll figure that out as we go. Our opponent leering with uh, Dark Switch Shore Serum Vision. So um, I guess first thought is, you know, perhaps uh, Ad Nauseum. Maybe, but we'll see. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, definitely the correct answer just has to be to shock ourselves. Get this Steel Leaf Champion down. Just go for the beatdowns. And you know what? This beats down very hard. It's to the tune of uh, six damage a turn, in fact, right now. And the next turn we can play Tireless Tracker plus land, depending on what we're playing against. Or we can just play our Shaman and plan on discarding the Tracker. Uh, if, we can, if we need to find a red source, of course. But we could discard the Tracker. Go get the uh, the Impervious Great Worm, the 16-16, and then have it be the only uh, card in our hand when we play the Kragenwood Cremator here and hit our opponent for 16. But this looks pretty good. Our opponent's got Guilds of Ravnica 2 going on here with uh, Discovery. Pretty nice one. All right, so looks like they put them both into the graveyard with a Thought Scour and a Swamp. That's going to pass to us, huh? Ooh, Eldritch Evolution, okay. And we got a lot of stuff we can do with that, but I think the answer here is going to be probably Tracker Land. It's hard to say. I have no idea what our opponent's up to, and that's part of the issue here. It's not Ad Nauseum. Not with, I mean, maybe this you could see, the, the Discovery you could see, Discovery Dispersal, but not, not the Thoughts Hour, which means it's something else, which means I definitely like attacking for this damage here. Uh, but I think after that, I just want to get the tireless tracker down, get the value while we can before our opponent has uh, any sort uh, of removal or counter spells or anything like that going on. Because as much as, trust me, and I want to, <laughs> but as much as I want to crack and what cremator our opponent to death here, uh, it's very possible we're just supposed to beat him down. I mean, we've got an extremely good beat down hand here. Turn two steel of champion on the play with noble hierarch. That is, is frankly terrifying if you're the one trying to cast serum visions. Now we'll see what our opponent wants to do now. I feel good. Eventually we're going to hit a second red source. Um, we can maybe set up a Fauna Shaman line. We've got a lot of options, uh, depending on what our opponent does. So it looks like they're actually just playing Esper. So I wonder if it's Esper Gorios. That's have to... That has to be what I, I think it is. It's going to be Esper Gorios here. Liliana, just, just not very good here, to be honest. They want to make us discard, huh? All right, I'll discard the Eldritch Evolution. I don't know if Liliana making this... They do discard Obzid out. So it is Esper Gorios. So that does make sense. Whoa, second cremator. Not really what we wanted. Um, I think the play is going to be to crack our clue. See if we hit a land here. It also grows our tracker, which is important. Oh, Strangle Root Geist is interesting. I could play the Strangle Root Geist. Do I just have Lethal? Oh. Oh. Huh. I guess that's why you do it right there. Here I was thinking, well, like it's in the tracker, Liliana, the Steel Leaf Champion at them, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Why don't I just attack them for 11 and kill them instead? How about that? Yeah, punish them for shocking themselves. All right, Esper Gorios, I see you. Excuse me. All right, so things that we want here. I haven't seen this list in a minute, so I don't know exactly what they have going on. But their plan is to put that Obsidat into the graveyard or maybe Gristlebrand. I honestly don't even know exactly what cards it plays. Uh, but then return it to play with Gorio's Vengeance. And the point being with Gorio's Vengeance is before it gets exiled or sacrificed or whatever Gorio's Vengeance does, uh, you can exile the Obsidat to its own trigger and then bring it back. So you get to sort of cheat the Obsidat into play and it just comes, you know, back forever. It's pretty strong. Um, so with that in mind, I would like a Scavenging Ooze. <laughs> I would also like... Relic of Progenitus. All right, so that's the easy stuff to start with here. And our opponent does have Liliana, so maybe I want to keep my Noahide Ferox, I guess. Magus of the Moon seems great. I'm going to cut, actually, a couple Eldritch Evolutions here uh, because, uh, one, we need to cut something. Two, our opponent has counter magic in all likelihood, so maybe I'll even cut them all. As much as I 
I feel like having one's fine. It's just a dangerous, it's just a dangerous card. You don't want to sacrifice something as an additional cost and then have it countered. I had a lot of rhetoric. I don't know if that's good or not. I said I, I think the plan is for them to just put it in there naturally on the first couple turns and then Gorio's Vengeance it back to play. I don't think it's necessarily to you know quote unquote pop off or combo off the way. Um, that a Grishel Brain deck or something would. So I don't actually think I don't want a Red Eric is where we want to be. Although maybe it'll change my mind. In fact, I mean, maybe it's just fine because they also have Snapcasters and stuff in their deck. We're certainly not casting more than one spell a turn. All right, I've talked myself into it here. Talked myself into it. I'm going to cut a, a Lightning a couple. Honestly, the Lightning Bolts aren't very good. I don't think that's how this matchup is going to be decided. All right, Kitchen Fix is the last card I'd like to try to make room for. A lot of three drops, but hey, that's why we have the Mana Dorks. I'm going to go ahead and cut these Lightning Bolts. I don't know if that's good or not. It's risky, um, but I don't necessarily want to be bolting my opponent to death. I don't think they really play creatures. Well, they play Jace Friends Prodigy. Maybe I want to keep those Bolts. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm, I don't know exactly what this list looks like right now, so I don't know if they're playing Jace's. If they do have Jace Friends Prodigy in it, then we do want the Bolts, but yeah. Let's say it works though. This hand's just gonna this hand's just gonna kill him. Can't say we're gonna cast this impervious great worm anytime soon, but we are just gonna kill him with these uh uncounterable shingle root guys. Oh, look at that, we even get a Well hmm. It's actually that's actually interesting because obviously I wanna play the Temple Garden tapped, uh, but I also want to make these shingle root guys as uncounterable next turn. I guess I could have done that regardless. It doesn't matter too much. Two life is probably not going to be super relevant no matter how it shakes out. But I can just play Temple Garden on turn three along with the second Shrango Root Geist. Oh, they do have Jace Friends Prodigy, so I am regretting cutting those uh, Lightning Bolts a little bit right now. Not that that matters too much, I would say. Given that... We didn't sideboard them out for any of these cards, so this hand wouldn't have had a bolt no matter what. Well, we've drawn our big stuff. Would like to draw a Kragenwick Cremator here in a turn or two. But you know what? I, I guess it depends. Our opponent might just have it here. They might just... Yeah, they, they just have it. And they at the very least have the Obsidat. Do they have the Gorio's Vengeance as well? They do. All right, we just never had a shot, but you get to see their deck do its thing. All right, yeah, this thing comes into play with haste. The bigger problem is not the haste. The haste is obviously annoying. Um, and it's not even the 5-5, five five, but every turn, it dra when it ends the battlefield, it drains us. And then being the incept, they get to exile it. And they just get to drain us every single turn. And, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to race that. We can try to block it for a minute, but the two life drain every turn is so rough. And now our opponent just gets to play sort of a normal... Um, you know, a normal game of magic, and that's that's the that's the real problem here. It'd be one thing if that was all we had to contend with, uh, but yeah, our opponent's also just going to play real magic, and that's kind of a problem for us too. So I'm gonna keep him back to block here. Like I said, I don't know that we have a a, a chance to win the game. If we do, I think it involves drawing a Kragenwick Cremator, and. Uh, discarding one of these Imperious Great Worms to do 16 damage to our opponent. I think that's basically all we've got going for us here. Although, to be fair, that's a reasonable thing. They're going to transform this chase. It's annoying. Eh, Shringer Geist is one of the best roadblocks we could ask for against Obsidat, at least. So we've got that going for us. So we have outs. What I haven't seen yet from them are any counter spells. This deck is cool. I've actually never played this deck on stream before. Uh, but I really should, to be honest. I mean, gosh, you even get to... Our opponent could just have another one if they wanted. It's legendary, but you can just Jace Minus to give a card flashback and then flashback Gorio's Vengeance again. Lightning Bolts are coming back in. I don't know what's going out, but the Lightning Bolts are coming back in. By the way, I guess this is what happens with this deck. I get that it's uh, you know, it's part of the deal. We signed up for this to an extent, but uh, yeah, I won't lie. The hand of two Imperious Great Worms and a Galta, maybe not where we wanted to be. All right, so our opponent gets to uh, lock down one of our guys here. Sort of, I can attack for three. 
This is so much loyalty. This card's so good. Never really caught on in modern outside of essentially this deck, Grixis Control for a minute, but it's just a good card. It's just a very good card. Well, there's the mountain. Um. I guess I don't fear the ultimate that much. I just want to poke our opponent. I won't lie to you. This does not look very good for us. And keep this one back to block. We are going to die very soon to what our opponent has going on here. Even if they do nothing. I, don't, I don't even, honestly don't even know if we could beat them doing nothing. We will see though. I guess I could have played this game just differently and not... Yeah, you know, if I just played the Temple Garden and then this, we would have been able to play this and name Human with it. Alright, we're going to do it. Right, look at that. We did one damage to our opponent. We got there. Alright, let's see if we can resolve a Tireless Tracker. I can't say I'm enormously hopeful, but you never know. Yeah, it did resolve. Look at that. This is actually... Good information we're getting here because if our opponent, I don't think we have any other giants, so I'm just going to name Shaman here. Um, if our opponent plays no counter magic, we kind of get some information here and then it means bringing those Eldritch Evolutions back in is way better. Because imagine if we drew Eldritch Evolution right now, we could, uh, we could play our land, play the Eldritch Evolution, throw away either of these creatures to go get a Kraken with Cremator and have a two-thirds chance, 66% chance repeating, of course of uh, hitting our opponent for 16 to win the game. So, I don't know. There's maybe there's something to be said here. If we just, you know, every turn we play that we don't see counter magic um, makes me more likely to bring those back in the next go-around. But we're definitely going to have outs to win the game. Depending Again, depending on what our opponent's up to. They're playing Esper Charm. This is kind of cool. Not only is Esper Charm just generically strong, it's Innocent Speed Divination if you want it to be. Or... Enchantment Destruction. Or, now this is the part I love. Target player discard two cards. So not only is that just incredibly powerful in the abstract, it's a two for one where you can, it's at instant speed, but you can even make yourself discard to discard your, uh, <laughs> to discard your Obsidat. I love it. Nice piece of tech there. All right, our tracker has been shrunk. Oh, our opponent didn't want us to block and trade with it. Wow, our opponent doesn't even want to attack. <clears throat> okay. Maybe we got a chance to win here. But our opponent could just have Cryptic Command as well. Like I said, they, their deck probably... Oh my god. Uh, I'd say live by the Great Worm, die by the Great Worm. But honestly, I haven't even got to live by it. I'm just dying to it right now. That's a lot. That's a lot of Great Worms, that's for sure. Alright, let's crack some clues. Oh, this is a May? Oh, that's so disgusting. I didn't realize this. Our opponent can just keep it back to block. How sick is that? That's pretty cool. Alright, with all that said, let's crack our clue and see what's up here. <laughs> this three great worms and a Galta. <laughs> Love it. For what it's worth, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight of the ten mana we need right now for this. Kraken with Cremator just gives us a chance to actually win the game, though. Noble Hierarch does not. Although, I mean, I'm not going to say no to it. It doesn't exactly do what we want here. All right, I'm going to send this Strangle Root guy in. No, I'd rather keep it to block, I guess. It doesn't really do as much sending it in. All right, well, we'll play our Noble Hierarch, see what happens here. And we can crack a clue in the end step. Now, Cryptic Command is the, the interesting one here. <laughs> Vendillion, click me. Please. Please do. Please, Vendillion, click me. Nice Vendillion click. Oh, they targeted themselves. Come on, target me. I'd love to cycle one of these cards. Kraken with Cremator would be so good, though. They're at 16. Conveniently enough. 
Excuse me. Although, that said, we're actually pretty close to this Galta now, too. We've got uh, seven, nine power in play. I could have maybe just read out Galta last turn, but my opponent was repping Cryptic Command. I didn't. I was trying to play around Cryptic Command as best as possible. It's unfortunate there's no convenience. You know, sometimes everything's just a human or everything's just a wizard or something. You can get a lot more value off the Cavern of Souls. Now that we know what our opponents are, we're probably bored in that other Cavern of Souls, too. Oh my gosh, the Scarab God. Okay. Scarab God it is in modern. I guess it makes sense. That said, we actually have a we have a shot to do this here. We're going to get the opportunity to do this. Our opponent is going to not exile their obs at that, so they're at 16 right now. If we can hit off this off these clues, we could win. Kraken with cremate. Oh, sca oh scavenging news isn't bad, though. <laughs> to be honest. Um, okay, let's go get a forest here. Kind of tight on actual green mana, I suppose. All right, so I've got six, eight in play right now. So this thing is not quite just cost green. I have access to three green total here. I think I could play Galta. It's just going to be kind of sweet. Not going to be able to do anything else, but I think I can play Galta. I guess my opponent can kill my creatures and get him back with Scarab God. That costs so much mana, though. Oh, I have the Noble Hierarch. We're good. We're good. We're good. This is so good. We did it. We just cast Galta in Modern. I love it. Now we get to pass the turn. There's no way we're going to win this game, right? There's just no way. Are any of these zombies? This isn't a zombie. It's a spirit advisor. Okay, let's see what our opponent tries to do here. We've got one activation with our scavenging news if they do go for anything. I would actually love for them to do this. Are oh, they really going to go for it on the Jace? I'm just going to eat it. Is this gonna, our opponent tapped all that mana in their upkeep? Is this gonna work? I have to find a way to kill them. Wow. Okay. So we did that. Our opponent spent mana on their upkeep. Our scavenging news ate it. We gained a life back. We get to crack a clue in the instep here, and we have a Galta in play. Just casual twelve twelve trampler in play here. Now maybe my opponent's gonna Gorio's Vengeance back this other Obsidat just to get the drain. That's possible. Oh, they're going to Fatal Push our ooze. Okay. Kind of did its job. I mean, maybe my opponent... I, yeah, I don't know. They, I, I consider this fine. We have a Galta! It's funny. My opponent could actually trade with it, right? Like, yeah, they could actually trade with it if they wanted. All right. They're going to use this to flash back the Fatal Push. Uh, They fetch, so they have Revolt. They can actually kill our Tracker here. All right. Well, our opponent's... Yeah, I'm just playing this value game pretty well here. But you know what? Kragon with Cremator will still end the game for us. Brute's Paradise will not. Alright, that's no attack. Okay. Uh, let's see if they exile it. I would not suggest it. Nope, alright. Well, we're going to get another chance here. Missy Rainforest just doesn't do it. All right, let's see what our clue turns up. Eldritch Evolution! Are we going to do it? This is insane. What is this deck? Play my Birds of Paradise. Play my Eldritch Evolution. My opponent's tapped out. Sacrifice my Strangler guys for the value even. The one Eldritch Evolution we kept in the deck. Yeah, there was a reason I kept it in the deck. Now we get the Kragenwood Cremator. We shoot our opponent, reveal a card at random. That card is an impervious Great Worm to do 16 damage. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. Oh, it's incredible. Remember, I don't play these decks before I start recording. I mean, I, maybe we'll play some practice games sometimes. Uh, this deck I thought I understood pretty well. So I've never, I've actually never played the deck before. And there you go. We did it. We discarded an Imperious Great Worm and dealt 16 damage to our opponent who had a turn 
three Goryeo's Vengeance on Obzidat or whatever. What an incredible match. This is like a bulk rare from Shadowmore. What is... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was excited. Whew. Deep breath. Deep breath. Pro Tours this week. Get it ready for the Pro Tour. It's going to be sweet. But so is Kraken. What cremator? I'm going to be excited about this right now and worry about everything else later. That was so awesome. Woo, thank you for watching, everybody. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back. More Kraken with cremator combo here. Um, I think this hand's reasonable. Obviously, we have no idea what our opponent's up to. Our hand has cards that are going to range from very good to very bad. But at least with the Fauna Shaman, maybe we'll be able to tie it together a little bit here. All right, I think we want our... We've got our red here, but we want double red. I guess this can technically do it. I'm just going to grab a stomping ground. I mean, we don't need white mana for anything. All right, so... With this in mind, I guess it's the Tudra Up Fauna Shaman here. I think that's the one we want. Um, obviously, our opponent could have had Spell Snare. I didn't expect it, but they could have. But I could also just have Lightning Bolt or something. I'd rather get rid of this and save our scavenging news for later. Especially considering, for all we know, our opponent's on Storm. It doesn't look to be the case now that we see a Watery Grave Thought Scour. I'm guessing Grixis Death Shadow at this point. Inquisition of Kozula would seem to uh, indicate that as well. All right, well, these Eldritch Revolutions are going to be hit or miss. <laughs> they're going to be very good when they're good. You know, they're good top decks when after they've torn apart our hand and they're down low on cards as well. But if they have Severn Denials, they're going to look pretty bad. So good news is our opponent's going to do all kinds of work to their own life total. We're cracking with Cremators and pretty good. Unfortunately for us, they have a one mana 5-5. Five five. Because they always have one mana 5-5s. Five five. All right, the plan's going to be to pitch Goltus. Galta for something. I just don't know for what. Honestly, maybe just a uh, Strangle Root Geist. I think that's... I think that's actually a reasonable line here. Only thing we could do more is put Venge Vines in our deck and discard Venge Vines upon a Shaman. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here, because we've got a lot of options, and honestly, a lot of them are probably good. If we draw expensive stuff, we could also just set up a Kraken with Cremator play. I mean, maybe I could have kept the Galt and set that up anyways with our opponent at 12, but that feels that doesn't feel quite right in this situation. I honestly think I just want value. I think I just want the Shrangle Root Geist. I want to play the Shrangle Root Geist. I want to pass the turn, probably with the intention of blocking. And it, our hand gets a lot better. This line gets a lot better, too. If our opponent doesn't see Lightning Bolt, if they don't have a discard spell, and then we can just play off our block like a chump block, but then have the Bolt to finish off the Gurmag Angler, I think there's some value in that. Happy to take this hit. But we can also just play our, our Scavenging News, and it doesn't look embarrassing either. Oh, you know what? Our opponent might give us a chance to bolt this uh, the shadow. I'm going to give it a shot. It depends on whether or not we think they have Street Wraith. That's what it comes down to. Street Wraith makes it a 4 4. I'm going to try it, though. I think it's worth trying. I suspect my opponent's going to. Oh, they're not. They're just going to take the damage. Okay. Well. That makes us unable to go for this. I thought they were going to go for the block, but that's fine. I'm fine just ignoring it and just trying to set up a kill for them now. We can take the hit from it next turn if we need to. We can also just go get another Strangle Root Geist if we want. I'm going to go ahead and name Giant. I think the plan... If I had one more mana, this would be a lot easier. Hmm. We have a lot of choices. I think I'm going to opt to play the scavenging news here. Basically, I need to not die so that we can try to get our opponent with a Great Worm or something. I want to discard the Nullhide Ferox. Like, bolt something. Discard Nullhide Ferox. 
with Fauna Shaman, draw land, Eldritch Evolution, Strangle into Kraken with Cremator and kill them. That's a plan. Obviously, our opponent could have a million different things to mess it up for us. And we might just die. I don't know if my attack was good or not, actually, in retrospect here. Might have been a bad attack. I honestly thought my opponent was just going to block. I guess it makes sense that they wouldn't. Let's see if I have to chump block here. Oh, my opponent's certainly threatening lethal. They're going to loot, sure. I like them tapping their mana. That makes our line more likely to work here. Not guaranteed, but more likely. They discarded... Yeah. The problem is we lose to Severn Denial, but I just think we were always going to lose to Severn Denial. I'm going to block. And let's see what happens. They just have the Team or Battle Rage. Plus... Okay, I could never win anyways. Um, let's see here. I can... I can take 12, 17, put my life up. I'm just dead. Nido. I hate Death Shadow. I hate this deck so much. We were just never going to beat this. Never going to be what they had. And they, for the super parts, they probably have Summer Denial up the whole time. Yep, so this is going to just deal lethal to us. All right, fair enough. On to game two. Well, prove a point here and eat my Galta. Cannon life. How much damage is this one going to deal me? So this is going to be 12. Yeah, we're just dead. All right. All right, very fun game where our opponent had Teamer Battle Rage Death Shadow. <laughs> On to game two. Although you could argue that my attack there was actually the real problem, and it might have been. Is Wall of Reference good here? Maybe. Yeah, it's possible I wasn't supposed to attack there. I thought that attack would go differently. Um, but maybe I should have thought that through a little more and I could have I could have realized what was going to happen. Now, the good news is my opponent seeing our deck probably doesn't, unless they just have the soul read on what we're playing because they saw Galta, which they might. You have to know this deck exists. I think that the, uh, the Eldritch Revolution is going to be a little worse. I'm going to cut this Null Hide Ferox. It's fine, but the question is whether or not we would want some of the rest of that stuff. I don't know. We'll give this a shot. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about high risk, high reward hand. When we play our Noble Hierarchy, if there's a on top, we can just play Steel of Champions for days. I'm going to mulligan. Eh, we get the same hand. To be fair, it's the same hand with the Scry. Wow, that's... That's a tilter, actually. What do I do with this? I think I want it. Maybe I don't. It's probably just worse than a land. The problem is if my opponent were to bolt this, their hand doesn't do anything. I'm just going to get rid of this. I just need lands. Especially because removing the possibility in a perfect world of us actually getting to play the Steel Leaf Champion on turn two uh, is what we do if we keep that Birds of Paradise on top. We're committing to something that's just way worse. Obviously, we'll get punished by our opponent having a Lightning Bolt, but... Whack, dismember. Yeah, we did get punished. Yeah, that makes sense. I made the right decision. It's unfortunate it didn't work out here. That is unfortunately magic. Mold of six, can't find lands in a mana dork land heavy deck. That's the way it goes. Maybe my opponent will just put himself down to three and I'll bolt him with a land I won't draw. <laughs> Right. Does my opponent have the one mana 5-5? Five five? Oh, nope. Just a one mana 2-2. Two two. Oh my gosh, if I hit a land, I can try to kill it. Oh, I hit a land. Not exactly the one I wanted, but... I guess spirit it is. <laughs> There's not a lot of other choices here. 
All right, well, these will put up the walls for a minute in front of this uh, Death Shadow, at least. And they kind of make combat awkward. You know, they kind of make my opponent playing too fast and loose with their own life total kind of awkward. I don't know what our matchup's like with this deck. I actually think it's probably pretty reasonable. Um, them going low gets punished by not just the big Kraken with Cremator play, but just any Kraken with Cremator at all. Just discarding, you know, even a Steel Leaf Champion to deal five to him or something can really mess it up uh, for Death Shadow. All right, we'll take our block here. Who knows, maybe they'll just do something crazy, play a bunch of Serum Visions or something, and we'll just kill them with Strangle Root, guys. They are at eight. All right, let's see what they play. Thought scour themselves. Yeah, something tells me there's a 5-5 five, five coming at the end of this. As there always is. Yep. I hate decks that have one mana 5-5s. Five, <laughs> I hate trying to play fair decks in modern. And trust me, I understand our deck is just barely fair. But trying to play fair decks in modern and just having people do stupid stuff like this. This is not magic. This is a legacy deck. Ah, yeah, Shangaru guys forever, huh? Our opponent kept the team or battle rage in their graveyard in case they draw Snapcast or Mage to just kill us. They have two one mana five fives out right now. Our opponents had access to five total mana this game. Or I guess one, then two, three. They had saved six total mana. And they have killed two of our creatures and made two five fives. That's just fundamentally breaking the rules of magic. All that said, if we're not just dead, we're probably just dead. But if we're not just dead, maybe we'll draw a red source and Shrangaru guys and bolt them to death. Here comes the Snapcaster. Is this lethal? It's an 8-8, 16-16. We're going to take exactly lethal. This is so stupid. We didn't even get to play the game. All right. That was fun. <laughs> I guess I'm dead. I guess I'm dead on turn four to a legacy deck. Neat. All right. Fair enough. That's modern. <laughs> it's Grixis Death Shadow. I beat Grixis Death Shadow last week, so I was due to have a couple games where I didn't really get to play against it. That makes sense. That said, we were almost, almost out of chance in that one. Not quite though. All right, everybody, that was that was that. Let's try again. Hey, everybody, more Crag and Wick Cremator coming up in this hand right here. Well, I don't know what to think about this hand. Four lands, maybe not exactly where we want to be with a mana dork, but hey, we've got a Cremator. That's step one. Uh, and also, String of Rukas is pretty good in its own right here. We get attack for three on turn two. Perhaps, anyways. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. All right, I don't know what they're playing, but unless they just turbo combo us here, Windswept Teeth decks are probably an okay matchup for us. Although a breeding pool into a hierarch of their own. Okay. Uh, uh, sure, Band Spirits maybe, something like that. Let's see what we hit here. Yeah, that is the only thing I did not want to hit was another land. That's, uh, that's rather unfortunate. But... I guess we get attack for three. Yeah, this is kind of the uh, the the downside of this hand, right? It, it's one of those hands where when you keep four lands mandadork like this, <laughs> sometimes you draw the right cards. You know, you just draw good cards, and your hand just curves out perfectly, and you look like you you could never have lost. You just always had it. Other times, you hit two lands off the top, and all of a sudden, you don't get to do anything, and you're a good start. It's just completely wasted. So we will see which of those is the case here. Kraken with Cremator, not looking incredible at the moment, but you know what? We can do whatever we can do with the Strangle Root, guys. We can hold this Cremator in our hand. Um, I have to assume our opponent's on Banned Spirits at this point. Or not, with that Sacred Foundry. All right, so uh, four color, Sahili Rai, copycat combo. That's my new guess. That or it's just, it's not bring. what the, okay. What are you going to name in the dark, friend? Name Kragenwood Cremator. I would give you credit. That would be quite the called shot. Strangle Root Geist. That makes more sense. Q Strangle Root Geist off the top of our deck, I'm sure. Hmm. 
It never fails. And somebody run the odds and tell me just what the odds are of me getting incredibly unlucky. Oh my gosh, you got to be kidding. That is uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. You know what? You saw that first match. We got to draw our sweet card off the top. We needed to win. We got to do some cool stuff. And then in this one, we just this that that's our hand was already pretty weak before we had to just have that just insult rubbed in our faces. But <laughs> hey, we're playing Magic Online. That's the way it goes sometimes. All right. Well, pass the turn. We have a Kragma Cremator. Maybe I'll get a discard my Strangler guys and deal two damage to them. Maybe that's the value we're going to get here. Our opponent is just going to town on their own life total. They're at six. Now, they're probably just going to kill us or something here. They have access to five mana. So it might not have mattered anyways. That said, maybe we'll just draw a big drop. Even if it's not the biggest of drops, right? Maybe we'll get some damage in with our Strangler guys and then kill them with our Cremator. This is, that's absurd. The called shot, too. Not for them. It makes sense that they named it. It was the only thing in play. But for me, I just knew we were going to get that lucky. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding, though. It's actually fun. It's fun. All right. Voice of Resurgence means we're not dead, either. It doesn't mean they're going to block. That said, outside of the Shringer Root guy stranded in our hand, um, we, you know... We're getting down to a few cards in a Kragen with Cremator, man. We'll, what I would love to draw right now is a Fauna Shaman. Okay, no Noble Hierarch for me. You did it. <laughs> sure, I'll take four. If we draw a Fauna Shaman, discard Strangle Root, guys, go get a Impervious Great Worm or whatever for our, our Cremator, that wouldn't be so bad. Let's see what we get. Is it going to be good? Lightning bolt, huh? Okay. Well, I can lightning bolt this. I'm in. Yeah, lightning bolt the metaling mage and attack. This is a, actually as good as it was going to get for us here. This might work out. To be completely honest, that might have changed things a little bit because we'll get through some amount of damage here. I have no idea what my opponent's playing, by the way. I assumed a bunch of different things. You watch me go through the list of those different things here. Uh, but the Medley Mage and the Voice of Research is in the same deck? That's usually not how these things work. Usually Medley Mage is either a cyborg card or whatever, but you want to use it to, to kind of get tempo because you can, you know, depending on if you have knowledge of their hand or whatever, we're going to get paths to. Well, that makes things a little worse here. It's just odd to see these in the same deck. They kind of do different things. I mean, they, they can all kind of lock out, you know, soft lock, hard lock for Metal Image, but kind of lock out cards. But I don't know. Just kind of, an, kind of an interesting decision. No idea what our opponent's deck is at all. What I do know is that we have Kragenwick Cremator Mountain in hand, which means that if our next draw step is a creature with at least six power, we should be able to kill them. This discards a card at random, but it deals power equal to a player, so... Okay, let's see what this mentally mage names. Please don't name Kragen with Cremator. Please don't do that to me. Name Shringle Root Geist or something. <laughs> alright, good. Alright, alright. We are taking the beat down here. For what it's worth. Eh, that's a big beat down, as a matter of fact. Taking six here. But we have outs, I think. Our opponent's out of cards in hand. So we, we actually are going to have a shot at doing this. It's going to require, you know, some amount of luck or good fortune or whatever you want to call it. But it is possible here. We have a lot of outs. So fingers crossed. Scavenging news, not good enough, but pretty good, to be honest. It was a nice draw. Not the draw I wanted. It's not the draw that kills them. Uh, but it is a sweet draw. <laughs> I can also... I could take a completely different line on this game. Would this possibly... What if I just played my Scavenging News and my Kragen with Cremator and I discarded no cards for value, but I just had a 5-4? Would that be good? This kind of depends on what our opponent does here. 
you know, we represent a lightning bolt to kill them. So if they were to chump block, you know, not chump block, they could die. They've decided they want to play around that. But if you do chump block, it makes this thing smaller. They're top decking, which actually makes our Kraken with Cremator look pretty good. Oh, they're going to trade with the... Okay. Okay. Well, the thing is, the scavenging news itself is just a beast here, right? I think I'm better off just using my four mana to just eat their creatures rather than play this Kraken with Cremator. Because this, we're still live to all the same things we're live for, except now the scavenging news should dominate the board all on its own unless our opponent top decks a removal spell. They are top decking. Let's see what they top deck. This was a this was a sweet draw. Another meddling mage. <laughs> okay, their our opponent is meddling mage flooded over here. It does make this a four four, but by showing us their card, they can't even attack with us. We'll just eat it. <laughs> we never are casting Shangaroo guys. So that's for sure. Ever ever. And this this is looking up for us. We actually get to force chump blocks from our opponent next turn. Our right, scavenging so news is just going to be absurdly. Oh, no, don't do this. Oh, I guess they get the, uh... Oh, fair enough. They get the, uh, the, uh... I forgot about the exalted triggers here, so... It doesn't kill us. It doesn't kill us, but we can't kill it either. I could trade. I'm not going to. Because next turn I can just block it. All right, we're down to five, but we're going to be at seven here in the end step. I guess we're running out of creatures to eat. There's only a couple more, but that's okay. They have no more for us. And we've got a six, six. All right, let's see if we just hit a giant creature to, to just win with Kraken with Cremator. That would work too. <laughs> we did it uh it is tempting to not show it to my opponent for what it's worth it's possible we could win the game without doing this because i guarantee these meddling mages are dr naming kraken with cremator next game but we did it we did the combo 16 damage to our opponent you are at negative 10 that's right on to game two that was a sweet matchup that was a sweet deck i i still don't know what our opponent's up to but i think i like the slag storm and the Coldera Hellion here. I definitely like the Linvala. I want the Kitchen Things. We just want to play a fair game, as weird as that sounds. Ferox, I don't think I want. Surak. Surak's actually kind of bad here. Basically, we just give... I assume my opponent's going to have blockers. I'm going to get rid of the Surak. We have the Liliana here instead. Magus of the Moon. Our opponent has a weird mana base, so it could actually be good for what it's worth. Uh, I want the other scavenging news in here, I think, just to be exactly what it was in that last game, which is just kind of a, uh, you know, a, a mirror breaker, so to speak, right? A board breaker. We were, we were at parity there and then we weren't. So I'm going to cut one of the great worms here, um, because the Kraken with Cremators in this game, I think are going to be a little more combo oriented. Um, but we're not, we don't just need to fire it off as soon as possible. And considering we might not even get to, thanks to Meddling Mage... I think this is fine. I'm tempted to bring in the wall. Just because if the board stalls out, the wall could actually be really good for us. I'm not going to. I'm going to cut the Magus. Um, maybe a Mana Dork? Maybe I can just cut a Hierarch? We have a lot of three drops right now, which makes me not want to cut a Mana Dork. So we need to hit our threes on three. I might just cut a Cremator. We, we know our Eldritch Evolutions are going to resolve. We know our Fauna Shamans are probably going to live for a while. We've got a lot of time to just set up Kraken with Cremator and a big card with it. Um, but we can also just play a fair game and win, I think, based on what we saw from our opponent there. So, yeah, I think that it, it, I think that actually cutting, shaving some of the, you know, the quote-unquote the combo here uh, is actually a pretty reasonable strategy. I put it going deep on the sideboard as well, I guess. I mean, they did just die to Kragenwick Cremator. A Shadow Moor, previously a bulk rare. I'm sure it's not anymore. Discarding an impervious Great Worm, the Guilds of Ravnica buy a box promo. Look, I know we didn't like buy a box promos. It's the player base. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just saying that complaining about Nexus of Fate, I understood that. At least that made sense. 
But apparently you all missed the boat. Come on, YouTube commenters. Where are you at? The real broken buy box promo was impervious great worm all along. Now you know. Now I was here. I'm here for you. Now we know that if you're going to complain about buy box, buy box promos being too playable in constructed formats, I mean, Nexus of Fate's not getting played in modern. I mean, maybe a little on some, some weird decks, but impervious great worm sure is. <laughs> Look at this hand. Look at this hand. Do I keep it for the lulls? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to keep this hand. <laughs> I'm going to keep this hand because I think my opponent's just going to deal themselves four damage and I'm going to get to turn four and I'm going to discard one of these and just win. This is what, uh, I don't even know. The thing is, I can't, I would call this a meme deck, right? Uh, because it's pretty meme -y, right? Discarding, <laughs> playing this card in modern has got to be a meme in itself, okay? But I'm just saying that if you're going to play a meme deck, you, you just got to keep it. You've got a meme, you, you know? I didn't play this deck to not keep cracking what Cremator and Impervious Great Worm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sitting here trying to win a PTQ or, or whatever have you on Magic Online. I'm not trying to show all of you the best deck to ever exist in the format. I'm just trying to have some fun with a deck that randomly pulled off a 5-0. and oh, And, yeah, I won't lie. That means keeping cracking what Cremator, Impervious Great Worm, and lands. Now we're going to get blown out. <laughs> now we're going to get blown out. By the meddling mage. No, they named it. They just <laughs> Magic Online is bugged. All they can name is Strangle Root, guys. We did it. We're in the clear, everybody. All right, let's go get our... Uh, I guess I'll get my stomping ground here. I don't think it matters too much. All right, that works. I was gonna say we kept this hand for what it is, but at the same time, just uh, just hitting cards is just just hitting you know spells is pretty good because keep in mind the cremator discard is random, so we need at the very least to have cards out of our hand when we roll the dice, and I'm okay rolling the dice where maybe we have a two great worms and something, and we have a 66% chance to deal 16 to our opponent. I'm willing to roll the dice on that. All right, so we'll take three here. You know, all that said, I do actually need my opponent to deal themselves two more damage so this will work. Maybe they know that's the uh, they know that's the number they can't go below. Oh, that's a nice draw. I'm gonna name Elf here, I guess. I don't think it really matters, but I do want to play this Steel Leaf Champion this turn. I don't want to shock myself. I don't want to take extra damage. All right, so I don't think, unless we really, really want to roll the dice here, I don't know if it's going to be a uh, turn four Kragenwick Cremator, but it could be a turn five the way it's looking. We have a fourth land drop plus a tracker next turn. And remember what I said about everything else is we're still, look at the board. We're actually just playing a normal game here. Pasoli Prime Mage, very strong. Mentally Mage, very good. But we have a five, we have a three mana five for ourselves. And, you know, we're just kind of hanging in there and we're going to get to play tracker next turn with the stomping ground to make a clue. To get some of our own value throughout the game. I mean, we've actually got, you know, a lot working in our favor here. Even if you just discount the fact that we might get to a point in a turn or two where we can just have these as the last cards in our hand and just win on the spot. Also, Sylvie Champion can't even be blocked by these creatures. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. You always forget about it until it kills you. It's generally how it works for me when I play Incident Standard. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with Saved right now. I should really try to get some videos out, but been dealing with some uh, with some changes uh, <laughs> on Magic Online, so it's making it a little difficult for me. All right, they've got the path for the Steel Leaf Champion here. I'll take another land, sure. I probably should have got a Forest, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Well, that's a big attack. Here comes four for the Metally Mage. Oh, good. They're bringing... No. Send in both. It would make no sense to send in both, but it would give me a chance to win. It would make much more sense for our opponent to swing with one creature here with double exalted triggers and deal four. Because if you swing with two, you're dealing four regardless. Except that I don't want to trade my scavenging news off with Equisali Pride Mage when I attack. So uh, this, this holds back. This works out pretty well for them. We're down to 12. Let's see what we hit. Eldritch Evolution, you say? 
Yeah, now we're talking. Now I'm willing to just, I think, just sort of play out our hand. Yeah, I think we just win next. Well, we still need to do two damage to our opponent. That's a problem here. And we'll play our tracker. I wonder if they would trade. I bet they would. That's the problem. Maybe next turn we can get into damage one way or another, though. And then win. I mean, we've actually kind of got it here, depending on what we... If we hit land? Well, we don't quite have it, but... The evolution is a nice draw. I could go get the Linvala. That doesn't stop the Exalted. I don't really want to sacrifice either of these creatures. I can take another hit off of this before I think we're in true danger. Our opponent probably also has Spell Quellers, which is something to keep in mind. That's pretty good against our Eldritch Revolution. We can't cast Rangle Root, guys. I mean, we could just get a Cremator Spell Quellered and die that way. And I guess Cavern of Souls doesn't even get around Spell Queller because it exiles the spell. Let me see what our opponent wants to do here. That's the thing for them is they're questionably ahead on board. Um, perhaps not, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, but they are at the risk of just dying if they tap out, and that's the advantage we have, even though we're sort of playing this pseudo mid rangey creature mirror, which, by the way, this is A-plus modern right here. This is the best modern is, is when decks like this are playing against each other and are good. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, our, oh my gosh, so much Exalted. I would take one of those board wipes right now. Remember how we boarded in like 17 different board wipes? I would like one of those right now. Caldera, Hellion. I'd devour both my creatures. I'd do it. That's a lot of Exalted. Guess I'm just going to take six, huh? That's realistic. <laughs> okay, well then. We might just have to roll the dice on the Krakenwood Cremator. Let's see what we hit in our draw step here. I don't know what I want. Stranger guys, I can't play. Eldritch Evolution was not what I wanted. Okay, well, I'm going to have to go to the sideboard here just to look at what's in our deck right now to see what we could evolution into. So apologies for that, but let's go ahead and... Let's see what our deck is right now. I mean, I can actually go get this, can't I? I can Eldritch Evolution, my Tireless Tracker, into a Caldera, Caldera Hellion. Oh, this is going to be disgusting. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. That's the play. You didn't even crack my clue after. Well, I should crack my clue now then, right? The Caldera Heron's a five drop, so we have to give her to the Tireless Tracker. Um... But I guess if that's what we're going to do with our turn anyways, then I could hit a land to get another clue. So, all right. Got a plan. Got a plan. Got a plan. Remember, like I said, the plan was just to play fair all along. All right. And there we go. That will we can name Shaman. And now we even have a line towards this Kragenwood Cremator later on. Hit the land. We get a clue, which... Matters to our fair game plan. I guess I may as well attack with my scavenging news here. No, I don't want to because I want to eat it with my Caldera Hellion. Do you think how my opponent expected this? Do you think they expected to get Eldritch Evolution into Caldera Hellion board wiped? Do we think that's what they saw happening? Something tells me that's not what they expected. I won't lie. Um, yeah, I'll eat that. I'll, I didn't need to gain a life eating this. It's fine. We could hit the other tracks ooze later. Look at this, though. Look at what we just did to our opponent. That was disgusting. Five creatures died. We get a 4-4 out of the deal. They did hit another land, so they've got that going for them. But we might just win. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. If we hit land, then I can play this out of my hand. Doesn't matter what we do with it. I'll play this out of my hand, and then I'll cremate her for a guaranteed 16. So I cannot believe we just called to. I started playing 
like I said earlier, around Shadowmoor is like technically when I first came into Magic. First time I started drafting and like playing at a store, really, was Shards of Alara. And Caldera, Caldera Hellion was legal. And I, it wasn't even playable. That's the crazy part. It was like a bomb and limited or whatever, but I certainly did not ever expect. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Now you just know that you're dead. Is this a have to? You just have to exile my Eldritch Evolution. You just have to make my my Kragenwood Cremator Leaf. Oh, I guess they can chump block. <laughs> but then they can't. Their mana confluence means they can't use it the rest of the game. This is just absurd. It's 2018. Modern is more broken than it has ever been. KCI, Bridgevine, when Relic of Progenitus is too slow. That's where we're at in Modern right now. And, uh, yeah, we just played Caldera Hellion. And Steel Leaf Champion, huh? Don't have enough mana to do that. I'm just going to attack. My opponent has to chump block. They don't know what we have in hand. They have two cards in hand. We can just play this fair game and win, win I think. That said, I have a two-thirds chance to just win the game. So, you know, I'm going to do that. All right, here we go. Kragenwood Cremator, fingers crossed. 66% of the time, 0.6 repeating, of course. We will win the game right here, so let's see. We did it! <laughs> we did it. We discarded a Kragenwood Cremator and dealt 16 to our opponent. What a game. Caldera Hellion MVP. But now I've talked about this a lot in Modern. I've played a lot of decks. Let's be honest, right? We know what that was. That was Eldritch Evolution. This card... It's just unreal good. It's a tutor, everybody. I, I don't know if this is the deck that puts it on the map. I think I've probably played this card, maybe me and Jeff Hoogland, more than anybody else in Modern at this point, uh, just in different shells. It's just so enormously powerful. The thing is, in a game like that, that was our Tireless Tracker. You don't want to sacrifice Tireless Tracker. It's not like you play, quote-unquote, subpar cards like Strangle Root Guys to... Of course, that looks good when you sacrifice those to Evolution, but you're not supposed to want to sacrifice Tireless Tracker. But, by the way, we got two clues out of it. We sacrificed Tireless Tracker to Eldritch Evolution, and we got a card that won the game because it's a tutor. It's just, a, this card is just unreal good. Tutors are the most broken thing in Magic. We already know that, right? We just already know that's how Magic works. Uh, they don't, you know, every time they print a new Demonic Tutor effect, it either costs four mana as Diabolic Tutor, or it has a million drawbacks or loops to jump through or whatever, right? The closest we've got was the uh, Spell Mastery one in Magic Origins, I think, that if you had Spell Mastery, it was a Demonic Tutor, but it costs five mana on the front end. Like, tutors are just enormously powerful, and Wizards knows it. We don't get many of them, but Eldritch Evolution is a tutor. Not only is it a tutor, it puts it directly into play and it adds mana, right? Like, our three drop became a five drop for six total mana. That's right. We, we only lost one mana, quote unquote, in the exchange of turning our three drop that we got value into into a five drop that won the game. Anyways, this card is great. I love it. Uh, I love this deck. This is the most fun I've had in modern in, in, in maybe months, I think. This card, this was a lot of fun. Kraken Wood Cremator, everybody. This was great. I'm Corbin Hostler. This is Mining Modern. I will be... Uh, at the Pro Tour this week, looking forward to covering everything that's going to happen there. There's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be the Player of the Year playoff. There's an actual Pro Tour uh, team series getting going. Everything is just is just going off of this Pro Tour. It's going to be a lot of fun to start the year in Atlanta, and I'm very excited to be on the coverage team. And don't worry, I'll sell videos next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the deck tech for Crag and Wick Cremator Combo. That's right. This deck is wild. If you're watching this first, enjoy. If you're watching at the end, look at the beauty that is this deck. It is crazy. So I'm going to start with Crag and Wick Cremator here. When it enters the battlefield, it's a giant shaman from Shadowmoor. I love that set. It's when I started playing, actually. It was right around then. Uh, anyways, when it enters the battlefield, discard a card at random. If you discard a creature card this way, it does damage equal to that card's power to target player or planeswalker. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to discard some big creatures, and none of them are bigger than Impervious Great Worm. Sorry, Galta. Somehow this Elder Dinosaur is not the biggest creature in our deck, although it is a 12-12. Uh, but Impervious Great Worm, Guilds of Ravnica Sleeper here. It's a 16-16 Indestructible with Convoke. So maybe we'll get it in play somehow, but I really hope that we don't. I hope that we just discard it 
as the last card in our hand at Kraken with Cream Manor and just 16 our opponent. Pretty good, right? <laughs> That's what this deck is based around. Now, it's got a lot going for it, so I want to try to make sure I get it all here. We've got Mana Doors. We've got six of them. Uh, okay, let's start there, right? That's a good enough deck. We got some Lightning Bolts because we have Red in our deck. Why not? We got a Magus of the Moon. Again, because why not? But more importantly, we have this Eldritch Evolution. You know I love this card. And I promise, as much as I wish I could claim credit, I did not make this deck. This deck actually 5 0 a league recently. Uh, and it's running Eldritch Evolution. I've always talked about how powerful this card is, and here you see it. So Eldritch Evolution deck means we can turn these one drops into three drops. We can turn these two drops, we're talking Strangle Root Geist, Undying, into four drops, into Kraken with Cremators, into the nearest about food. We discard a card at random. So out of nowhere, even if we have nothing going on in our hand except the stupid Grey Worm, <laughs> we can Eldritch Evolution away a two drop or whatever, three drop as well if we really wanted to do a Kraken with Cremator and just 16 our opponent on the spot. It's a pretty wild deck. After that, we've got a lot of value. We've got Fauna Shaman, another way to go find the Impervious Grey Worms if you need something to discard or the Kraken with Cremators if you need the discard outlet. And then, because we have that, we get to play some fun ups here. We've got the, the Scavenging News. We've got, as I said, the Magus of the Moon. We've also got Sorek the Hunt Caller. So if we do end up playing our Galta or our Impervious Great Worm, well, we're going to have for Formidable, as it turns out. Have Total 8 Power Greater. Give one of these uh, Haste. No Trample on Great Worm, but does have Trample on Galta. No Hide Ferox. More Guilds around to flavor. I don't really know if this is worth it. I guess it's cool to search for. And you can't... You don't get to cheat it by discarding it yourself. You have to have an opponent cause you to discard it. But, hey, if our opponent has a Liliana out, I guess maybe we can go search up a Nullhide Ferox to discard. Uh, on top of that, Seal Leaf Champions. This beats down. We just need to do some damage to our opponents uh, before we get them with the Cremators. And this does a pretty good job of doing that. And Trios Tracker, of course, is the value. Mana base, pretty straightforward. Sideboard, it's a wish sideboard, for lack of a better term. It's got a lot of bullets in here. Look at this. Devour one called Dara Hellion. Look, I just took the list as it was. But deals 3 damage to each creature. Why not? That's pretty good. It's like a creature board wipe. All of this is Eldritch Evolutionable. That's the point. The side, the sideboard is you can all be Eldritch Evolutioned into. Kitchen Finks, Eidolons for Storm, Wall for, I, I guess, Burn. I don't really know. I would assume so. Limvala where it's good. Uh, Kitchen Finks, Reclamation Sage. All that makes sense. Another scavenging news. Then we've got some more. Another Cavern of Souls here. The third one. I guess if we're playing against Control and you just really need it. Where you assume you're just going to have to cash your creatures. Relic. Alpine Moon Shatterings. We all stuff you've seen before. Damping Sphere. It all makes sense. So, anyways, everybody has the deck. Kragenwick Cremator combo here on Mighty Modern. Enjoy. Or I hope you enjoyed one of those two. Thanks for watching.